Hello, I'm Jagannath, and you're watching The Natural Farmer. Okay, so welcome to the Banana Circle video. I um, just want to start off by saying one simple thing. I can show you how to make banana circles. I can show you how to plant them and select them, etc., etc. I am not a banana expert. There are banana experts out there. There are entire websites dedicated to banana expertise. There are farms. There are there are many many generational experts out there whose grandfather, father, etc., or grandmother have been specialists in bananas, okay? I am not one of those people. I know some things about bananas. I don't know everything by any stretch of the imagination, okay? That's not what this video is about. This video is about showing you <clears throat> a permaculture technique which works with the permaculture principle extending the edge, okay? Because in a linear planting of bananas, um, there's an edge relationship that exists, but you make that edge relationship uh, more dynamic when you use a banana circle. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that right now for this moment. So I asked myself a lot of questions before I made this video. I made a previous video for the organization I work for, and one of the people in the organization said, okay, yeah, great video, but why a banana circle? I don't understand what the, what the real benefit of a banana circle is. And so I thought about that a lot and I, you know, I paced out the, the length of the, the linear cultivation and then I, I checked the mulch and I checked the density and I, I checked all these things and, and was like making these comparisons and I was like, why, why do we do banana circles? Is it some trendy permaculture thing that's just like cool if you've got a banana circle and it's not cool if you don't? That's not enough reason to plant. Nature doesn't really care if you're cool or not. Um, and so what I came up with uh, kind of got explained a little bit in this um, course that I was teaching the other day and they happened to videotape some of it. So I'm gonna play that for you right now. What we do is take the compost from this pit. So we're gonna take a look at it. Right here. There's masses of compost down in here, right? And so you pull it up here. This is what's at the bottom of this pit. Can you see that? You know what that is? This is compost, okay? What's my It's compost. It's black. I didn't throw finished compost in here. This is black compost, which will not come from classic mulching of bananas. You will never in a million years get compost this dark under 12 inches of base mulch that you see typical on a banana plant, ever. This compost of this quality can only come from a pit of about a meter deep, putting organic material in it and letting nature do the rest. There's a huge uh, population of microorganisms that feed these bananas. This is the difference between classic, uh, how do you say, classic cultivation of bananas. And this, this pit is even full. I can fill this pit up this much. This pit is like half full because I haven't chopped all the weeds to fill it up. This is not even maximizing the capacity of what this pit can do, okay? So let's take a look at what the other banana mulching will do here. So this is the standard way of mulching under a banana plant, right? We've got banana stuff, we've got some weeds, we've got things, and then there's the soil. So we've got mulch that's approximately that deep, right? So there is no way ever, 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 ever on God's green earth <laughs> that you will get that quality of compost with this much mulch, okay? Even though this much mulch, you take five banana like this, I have them in a circle with all my mulch 
like a village. It's like taking a, 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 a each village uh, person in, uh, they make a garden, okay? And then at the end of their harvest, they put all the food together, as opposed to one person's food and one person's food and one person's food. That's like a village living around a, a central idea, okay? This is individual. So I got five of these, all this depth, and I get, yeah, there's some compost under here. Trust me, this is much, much better than if you're not composting. But it's not nearly as good as a compost pit because you're adding up all the compost for all those in a pit that's like at least a meter deep and the quality of the compost is beyond compare. So someone just asked a question also, what about water, okay? In this particular type of planting, even though we're in the high area, this water, this won't get flooded here because we're at the highest part of the whole land. Um, water won't come near here. You don't want, you won't want to um, have water at the root because it'll fall over. If this gets too wet, it'll fall over, okay? So the water stays around here, but it doesn't collect. It doesn't stay. It just kind of goes away. But let's look at what happens in the banana pit. But in the banana pit, right, what happens is it's easy to see all the water comes in here. But each banana is on a small mound, okay? It's on a mound with a little indentation that holds it when the water falls directly. But then the water is free to move through the bananas. And so the idea is when this fills up, it goes toward, a, toward a, a trench back there, and that trench feeds into another trench, and then it goes out to that trench, and then it goes out to the pond, and then it goes out to the sea eventually. So the irrigation for this has already been thought out, okay? You catch it. You're not catching it where it's going to make the banana fall. You're catching it where the banana can reach to it when it wants it, but it's not going to get flooded by it if it doesn't want it. That's the whole key. This is just design. It's just design. I have the same amount of materials. I have the same amount of mulch. I've just designed it in a different way that makes it a hundred times more effective. That's the whole thing about permaculture and natural farming is you, you use design to make things much more effective. And if I can add this at the end, you have to be willing to people to say, that will never work. That'll never work. You can't do it that way. We don't do it like that around here. This will never work. You have to be willing to just look stupid for a while until the plants grow, and then they might still not believe you. <laughs> they still might not believe you, even though the plants are growing there and proving that it works. So just letting you know, this is kind of the journey that you're in for if you want to take this road. So hopefully that explains why we do banana circles, or that's why I do banana circles anyway. Um, is it could be boiled down to two words, water and compost, natural compost, naturally occurring compost. Those are the two main benefits that I see in the banana circle setup. So I just want to say at this point that um, banana circles are a subset of a bigger group called pit gardening. Uh, pit gardening, um, so the, the legend goes, was created in the Canary Islands. It was an art that was lost for a long time and then brought back by some visitors. Uh, the Canary Islands have a lens of water, uh, they're shallow, shallow water islands. Uh, if you go too deep, you're going to hit uh, salt water and you're going to spoil the lens of water that's below the surface of the island itself. And for some reason, that type of cultivation is, is the best with the pit gardening. You can imagine that fresh water will present itself in these pits and then you throw the compost in and it, it works itself out pretty well there. So the other type of pit gardening uh, that I want to emphasize that you can do, and some of it we do here, um, is uh, our papaya circles. That's another way. Uh, bamboo circles. And then also uh, coconut circles. So on this property we have a bamboo circle. I'll show you an image of it right here. It's basically uh, a bigger pit, much bigger pit, with a bamboo forest planted around it. And then when the pit reaches its maximum uh, capacity in terms of water, it overflows into our pond. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, uh, bamboo, um, how do you say, uh, organic waste leaves that fall into the pit and that makes natural compost and so basically you have a nutrient cycling nutrient harvesting system that is in perpetuity it perpetuates okay that's what we want that's sustainability uh, in a nutshell and that's exactly the type of uh, uh, example that we want to model here in this farm and we're, we're building toward more and more of those um, demonstrations of sustainability okay the other is the papaya 
papaya circle. Um, I have a video on papaya circles if you want to check that out. We have papaya circles on this land in various stages. Uh, and the last is the coconut circle. And we don't do a we don't have one yet on this land. Hopefully, perhaps we'll we'll make one later. But as you can imagine, uh, they're a little bit bigger than the papaya or banana uh, circles. So now that you understand the benefits of pit gardening, I'm going to jump ahead and show you how to make a banana circle. And the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to select the bananas that will go in your banana circle. Okay, so I want to show you this example because basically we have multiple stages going on here in the life cycle of a banana, okay? So this is the mother, so what we call the mother. She's the one producing the fruit. Um, so the banana plant grows and then it, it, it grows from something called a corm, which is under the ground. And it's this big kind of bulb, um, central kind of heart of the root system, okay? And that grows... Uh, to a, a good size depending on the banana. Then what happens is um, suckers come out of there. A bamboo grows in a similar way. Some other plants grow in similar ways. And the suckers are born off of the mother corm, okay? And they become their own plant uh, eventually. And so what happens is you've gotten multiple suckers coming off, okay? But not all of the suckers that appear are able to make bananas if you separate them from the mother, okay? So it's very important to understand which ones can and which ones cannot, okay? Uh, the ones that can are called sword suckers, the ones that cannot are called water suckers, typically. So I wanna show you this example because we've got the mother here, uh, nearly at the end of her life, okay? She's falling over, bananas tend to fall over toward the end of their lives or if they get in too much water. Uh, I've propped it up here, propped her up with this stick, and you can tell the bananas that are there. Um, the bunch is nearly finished. Normally there is a um, flower hanging off the end of this uh, banana bunch here, but the locals here tend to twist off the flower because they, they don't want uh, uh, any energy to go into the flower and take away from the fruit formation. Uh, there's an edible part in the flower, which is said to be quite delicious. Just giving you the information here. Um, but then what's happening down below is uh, the continuation of life because here's the mother toward the end of her cycle of life and here are the babies that have come off of the corm, okay? So these two babies just happen to be both sword suckers, right? So there are a lot of different philosophies on banana growing. It's said that you should pull off everything but the next sword sucker some people say that. Some people say leave one sword sucker and one water sucker as security. Um, it depends on which philosophies you listen to. What I do is I typically leave at least one sword sucker. I only take a sword sucker from here to transplant elsewhere uh, because I don't want to disrupt the life cycle of this particular plant. Okay, so then in the case where I would uh, propagate this plant by removing this sword sucker, which I won't do at this time. It's actually the uh, banana plant of the uh, people who live at this house, so it's not really um, within my right to, to take this sword sucker out of here. And I have some other sword suckers that uh, I can show you in demonstration. Um, I would dig down in this area, and the mother's here, and so there is one corm happening here, and there's one corm happening here. And I would reach my hand down once I move the dirt away and feel where the two corms meet and then break them off, okay? Break this baby off from the mother, okay? Um, some people uh, don't do it with the hand. Some people swear by this, uh, like a metal bar, like a flat bar, and they push it down in there and it creates a flat cut, okay? Um, I've done it both ways. You can do it just with your hand if you're pretty strong, um, otherwise you can use the flat bar. But the most important thing is to not take a big chunk of the mother corm or to not take a big chunk out of the baby corm. So um, you're basically uh, trying to keep each piece. So like if this is one and this is the other, you're trying to keep them intact and break there. You don't want a big chunk coming out of one or the other. You want the, the life uh, force, the heart to remain 
um, stable and complete. So you want to separate them cleanly. Okay. So if I had separated the baby from the mother, uh, this is what it would look like. Okay, it'd be better shaped than this, I hope. Um, our organization has uh, some other areas where they have bananas. And so they shipped these to us. They kept the stock intact because they weren't sure how long it was gonna be before we transplanted these. Typically, if we know we're gonna transplant them quickly, we cut the stock, okay? Because otherwise it just kind of sits in the ground and you know, it just withers eventually or it just kind of interrupts the life cycle and then the, the plant's obligated to put up another sucker and it just takes longer. So typically in banana planting, um, we cut the stalk and, it, and the new one comes right from the center of where we just cut here. So I'll show you what that looks like. But um, here you can see that this is the baby and the mother was over here. Okay, so the mother was like this. All right, so in the example I was showing you, I was gonna say I could put my hand in here and just kind of separate them. Well, this is too big. You know, this would have to be much smaller for me to do it just manually with my hand. But if you can see there, there's a flat spot. There's a flat spot that someone took a, a, a piece of metal and they cut this baby off, this corm, and then the mother stayed intact. And then they pulled it out of the ground and that's how they harvested it, okay? So there are roots coming off of this corm and basically uh, they're the feeder roots and we're gonna make sure that they stay intact. And then I'm just gonna cut this part and show you what that looks like typically. Um, we just go like that. And this is typically what we've got um, when we plant a banana, a new banana, all right? You can see in there, there are all the rings of the banana itself. But here's the corm uh, of the sword sucker and it's ready to be planted. So we'll show you how to do just a standard planting first, and then I'll show you how to do a banana circle after that. Okay, so I'll start simple here. Um, this is a little kind of donut mound that was created uh, through digging a little bit in this grove uh, because uh, the garden next door, my friend is doing um, kind of a little banana grove, okay? So uh, before we get into the circles themselves, I'll just show you simply how to plant a, a banana uh, start here and so I just dig down okay with my hand into this area all right just like that so then I measure and uh, the most important thing is to make sure that this stock is straight uh, one of the guys who came to work here for some reason he kept putting the stalks this direction if it's not cow grass and it's not some of these other things that you start um, with a 45, so to speak, a banana, you start it that way, it will just simply fall over. And that's not what we want. So you wanna make sure that the stalk is nice and straight, okay? So I'll show you another thing um, that will help you in planning in terms of how to position the corm when you put it in the ground. Okay, so this is the corm of a, another plant they're gonna plant smaller okay so like I was saying you don't want the you don't want the stalk to be planted like that the banana it can't take the weight here just you know it's a very small uh, root system and it'll just fall over um, but that's how it should be planted uh, directly straight up on all directions then again this is the corm reaches down to the mother okay it's been cut here um, and what will happen is if you want to this will come in, to, in handy when we start doing banana circles. We can determine what direction they flower in, meaning what direction the bananas come in. The weight is in the banana. When, I, when there's a big banana stalk, it's heavy, very heavy. Uh, before I came to India, I actually never had the experience of holding a whole banana stalk. It's a massive amount of weight for a plant like this. And so what it does is it balances itself, okay? So this, and the flower are on opposite sides. So if you want to determine that you're going to have a, a flowering plant where the, the flower, meaning the banana uh, bunch, goes to the outside here, then you want this bulb to be in the opposite direction. So if you're planting uh, banana circles, typically what I do is I keep this um, bulbous part to the center, 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 all the way around. And so then the flowers come to the outside of the banana circle. So important detail in terms of planning. 
Okay, so then this is an example of a banana circle, a partial banana circle planted on a food forest berm. Okay, so these are the most advanced banana circles we have on the property. Um, and they were planted uh, on January 12th this year. And today is May 28th. So I kind of did this in the papaya circle video as well, but I'm just going to show you again. Um, this is what it looked like on January 12th. This banana circle area, it's all brown. Uh, and then it progressed and we put the beans in. You know, nothing happened with these bananas until we put the beans around them. So I would strongly recommend beans with bananas. I think that they're very good companion plants in my experience. Uh, they do, the beans do climb up the bananas and so you have to unwind them once in a while. If you want to do that, you could leave them. Uh, I unwind them. But, uh, and then it, it grew and grew and grew and so then here they are today. And uh, in this particular banana forest, we have six varieties of bananas. There are companion plants to bananas, okay? You can look up those up online. There are a lot of root companions. There's taro, um, we can put tapioca uh, there, which is locally known as kappa, um, sweet potato. You can do the mints. Uh, there are a few others, yakon, another uh, root. This banana circle is planted like a die, like if you have a five, like a pair of dice, one die, you have a, a five, so it's got four points on the corners and one in the center. So there are four banana uh, circles on the corners and then one papaya circle in the middle. So that's 20 bananas and five papaya in this area of about 25, 30 square meters. So it's pretty good production um, in a 30 square meter area. And like I say, you're not gonna get this compost uh, in a linear fashion. Okay, so that is the banana circle video. Uh, very happy that you could tune in, very happy to present this to you. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below. And once again, my name is Jagannath and look forward to seeing you real soon.